You're listening to the Shoot Your Shot podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Jen. And we are two boss babes sharing our journey and helping inspire you to start your business. We are both in the wedding industry in Connecticut. I am a photographer and soon-to-be videographer. And I am a mobile bar, and I am excited to start our podcast with you guys. Yeah, we're going to share all of our stories along the way. Um, Just as we learn them, we'll be making episodes about different things, finances, our websites, social media, just all the nitty-gritty details. Yeah, and we cannot wait to inspire you to start your dream because we have become so successful in a very quick period and we want to share with others because entrepreneurship is a lonely journey and we're here to share how we make it not so lonely together. Yeah. So um, we'll just jump right into it and how we met. Um, Our first event was actually together and we met at that event. Um, We didn't know each other prior. Um, I live in Reading, Connecticut, and Jen is in Trumbull, based out of Trumbull. So we're not that far, but didn't know each other until we met in Litchfield. (laughs) So a good hour, hour and a half away. Um, And And I have to share a fun fact. Megan actually helped me with my trailer. (laughs) It was raining (laughs) and I had no clue what I was doing. So I pull a horse trailer for a living, which is not something I ever thought would be on my resume, um, but we'll dive into that. But Megan, I knew that we connected right away because she was able to help me in areas I couldn't help myself. She helped me back up. She helped me get it right to the hitch. And I just knew that was like the moment that we were going to hit it off. It was funny. It, I, I remember it was like downpouring that day. Yep. The yep. shoot kept getting rescheduled and rescheduled because it kept raining each day that we were supposed to shoot. Um and yeah you're like can anybody help me just back up my trailer I can't get the hitch on the ball and um everybody was just kind of like sorry I have no idea what you're talking about (laughs) and I used to work on a farm like I said I live in Reading and um yeah she was right there for me back it up right there yep yep and and we got out of there I got out of there successfully so talk a little bit more about your trailer yeah Um, So I am a mobile bar. So basically what that means is we bring the party to you. So I am a mobile bartending service. We renovated a horse trailer and turned it into a luxury mobile bar service. And the journey to get there is a wild ride and and we'll share more of that. But basically we do um, public events, private events, anytime you need some type of bartending service. Primarily we are looking to get into majority of the wedding business. um, But we do all type of events. So we do backyard parties, um, anything that you need a bar for. We are we are there. And and the renovation is a crazy I th- I think we'll do a whole series on on that. Um, but it was there was a lot of challenges and there was a lot of hoops that I had to jump through to get to there. And in this business, if you stumble, you have to get back up and you have to basically tell yourself that you're doing this for a reason and you have to remember your why and remember why you started. So um, lo and behold, I am a bartending service, but I am now an entrepreneur. I now own my own business and it is the most rewarding thing ever. And you're expanding. And I'm expanding. You're big time expanding. Yes, yes. Two seasons in and we are now getting our second trailer. So go big or go home is the motto that I, I have. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll dive into more of that. But you want to share your photography? Yeah. Um started as a hobby. I think it starts as a hobby for everybody. Yep. Um, I'm 21. I didn't go to college. But Let's talk about that really quick. So sure. Megan's 21. I am 35, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go there. I think after 30, you stop counting, but that's okay. Um, but we're so excited to share this journey because we are at two totally different stages in our lives. But entrepreneurship, you can start at any time. You could start when you're young and start when you're old. There's really no time frame to start your own business. And there's so many inspirational quotes that I don't know off the top of my head, but I know there's a lot, but it it basically tells you that these famous, famous entrepreneurs started at 50, at 60, at 70. I mean, it's, it's just crazy what you can do if you put your mind to it. So we're excited to share that we have different stages in our life right now, but we connected, we built this path together, and we want to share with you the different journeys that we have to try to motivate someone else who's at a different stage in their life too. Yep. You can do it anytime. And when you're meeting other entrepreneurs, like it doesn't matter what age you are. Like that was I didn't even know you were that young, by the way. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, nobody does. <laughs> I love it. But I mean, it's the same. Like all of my friends are older than me just because that's the way that it is. And I've made so many amazing friends, mutual friends between us two and yep. people that you don't know, people that you do. Um, and uh, I mean, just all out of the blue, it'll be like, oh my gosh, we're expecting. And I'm like, <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> and it's just like, it's crazy because it doesn't matter what age you are. You have so much in common and you can push each other to do, you know, the exact same thing. And it doesn't matter what stage of life you're in. And, and I think that's the important. You find people that you connect with because they're going to help motivate you. And I think that's where we connected so well because I reached out to Megan and I was like, I want to do a podcast and I don't want anybody but you to do it with me. <laughs> But I also knew that Megan was going to do like the tech side of it and I was going to do like the social media side. So you need to find people that, you know, they always say in entrepreneurship, like if you can't do it yourself, you need to hire someone or find Mm -hmm. someone. And I feel like that's where we connected because we do different things, but at the same time, we have the same vision and the same goal for everything. Yep. And we we balance out each other's strengths so well. Like you said, like the tech stuff, like I'm a photographer, soon to be videographer. And like we're recording this right now. It's out on YouTube. Go check it out. But um. Yeah, my love for photography started at the same time as video. Like, they both started together when I was taking classes in high school and at this cute little summer camp that I did. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I was just taking things one step at a time in my business, doing photography first. And now I'm starting video, and this is, like, a nice little nudge into that. But, um, yeah, like, you're super strong, super confident in networking, and I'm more on the shy side. Mm -hmm. So... It's We're going to bring that out of you. I'm going to get that out of you. <laughs> it's come out of me a lot. I mean, if you could have seen me in like elementary school, middle school, when I was 10, <laughs> I I was the kind of kid that would hide behind my mom's legs meeting new people. See, and- I was the wild child. My mom jokes that she only had one because I was like enough for her to handle. <laughs> but I think that's that's what balances us out too. I think like you, I I joked with Megan before we started today and I was like, you need to reel me in because I spiral on things and I'll go in different tangents. And I think that's where we connect so well because you'll be able to like bring me back and be like, Jen, get on, get on the subject again. But I think that's what's so important in entrepreneurship is just finding that connection with people. And we met at a random photo shoot like you just never know when you're going to meet that person but go back to photography how you started this yeah um so like I said I'm 21 (laughs) um and I took classes in high school um I went to a school a small public school just you know whatever they had like one video class and like one photo class but regardless both were about um uh I don't know how to describe it they were both about like composition not so much the technical side of things so it was about what makes a good photo a good photo how to edit your videos how to make your music tell your story rather than the dialogue and how to make things like share a uh, like a vibe if that makes (laughs) sense yeah it wasn't so much about camera settings or about camera bodies like I didn't really learn any of that stuff until I went to that summer camp in Maine. Um, I went to a pre-college program when I was like 16, I think, 15 or 16. And that's where I really learned about camera settings and about photography. Um, But it was the same kind of thing. We would sit in a lab computer room, turn the lights out, edit on Lightroom. So that's where I learned how to use Lightroom. And we would just put them up on the smart board and be like, oh, Megan, I love how you decided to edit it this way. Oh, I love how you cropped it this way to take this thing out of the picture and I like how you removed this from the background so that you weren't distracted by xyz and those were the kind of things that really made me fall in love with photography Mm -hmm. because it wasn't so much about like the technical it was about the art yep and did you have one teacher that like inspired you or like one person in your younger career because that's basically how your career started is you know seeing how much you enjoyed stuff like that but was there like someone that inspired you that like made you I don't know get into photography more I really don't know if anybody I would say my mom no shout out to my mom um, shout out. by the way your mom is also like my biggest supporter and I like, <laughs> love her more than anything she she's is the so best. excited that you're here right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go knock on the door when we go home later yeah. 
<laughs> she spent some time cleaning and was like, I'm so excited. When is Jen coming? Oh my Here, gosh, take all this the stuff best. outside. You need you need some coffee. You need some snacks. She Love loves it. you. She's Aww. she's my biggest supporter also. That's amazing. Um, yeah. My parents are super supportive. And I didn't go to college. So, um, hey, Here I mean, everybody's different. But, like, college having a nine to five job, those kinds of things do not define you nope. do the thing that you want to do. And there's a lot of people that I'm sure disagree with me and see what I'm doing. Probably kids my own age that did go to college and spent hundred grand, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> but not to diss anybody. I'm not trying to do that, but <laughs> I'm just nope. trying to say that like college in your twenties is the time where you kind of figure things out. Mm-hmm for most people and um that's what I'm doing right now and I just didn't do it in school I'm doing it making my own business but um, I love that I love that so my story is like completely different from that because I did go to college and I did do the nine to five so I don't wish that I found this entrepreneurship earlier in life because I feel like everything I did set me up to be so successful so my backstory I went to college. I had no clue what I was doing. I went to Southern Connecticut in New Haven and I studied communications and my best friend actually told me, she goes, you love planning events. You love planning your birthday party. You love doing stuff like that. And I was like, you're right. I do. She's like, why don't you get into event planning? And I was like, I don't know. Like I couldn't like imagine being at a wedding being like the fork goes here, the knife goes here, the wine glass goes here. I was like, that is not my thing. Well, lo and behold, it was my thing. So I graduated from Southern. I still didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I went to Ethan Allen Hotel in Danbury and I was a banquet server. And within my first like two shifts that I did there, the captain, which a captain is basically someone that oversees the whole event, like no showed that day. So my manager was like, I need you to lead the room. And I was like, I've been here three days. Like, what are you talking about? And he was like, I have confidence that you can do it. You're like, you got this. And I was like, I mean, okay. So that right there showed that someone saw potential in me in this industry and I could do it. So very quickly, I got my dream job. I worked for Hyatt Hotels in Greenwich and I was an admin to all of the managers who were planning the bigger events. So I really got to start from the bottom, which I think is so important in any level of business. You have to start from the bottom because then you know when you do get to the top that you did it the right way and you know how to do all the levels of that specific task or that specific job. So I started as an admin. I got promoted very quickly to manager and I started planning the events myself. So I loved it. I loved what I did. Um, I was there for 13 years. I don't regret a second of it because I thought that was going to be my long-term goal. I thought I was going to climb the corporate ladder. I thought I was going to, it wasn't really a nine to five. It was during the week, but I also did weddings and different types of events. So I was working all the time. And when I wasn't working, I was still working because email is on your phone. And I just felt like I had to be at my client's beck and call 24 seven. I was also commuting an hour and a half each way to work. Yes, it Mm. was crazy. So the Hyatt is in Greenwich. I lived in Trumbull, um, prime rush hour. It was just, it was crazy. So fast forward, um, I have two kids. My husband and I got married in 2016. We bought our house in Trumbull and had two kids later and then the pandemic hit. And that was my segue to, I'm also, if, if you guys tell, I talk very fast and I'm always on the go. Like I don't know how to sit still. So when the pandemic happened, it really taught me to reel it back in, calm down a little bit and kind of reevaluate my life, I guess. Um, I was also on maternity leave with my daughter. I was due to go back to the hotel in April and prime pandemic hit in March. So April, May, June, July, all those months, I didn't know if I was ever going to get my job back again. So I was furloughed from the hotel, which everybody was. And I got this crazy idea to open a mobile bar. So very long story short, which we could dive into, you know, how it started, the the hiccups I had because there were so many challenges and I could have easily stopped there. I couldn't find a trailer. I couldn't find a builder to help us do all the renovation work, um, which I'm again having challenges now with our second trailer. But it just goes to show if if you have a why in your business and you continue to remind yourself about your why you won't give up because you could, I I could have gave up when I couldn't find a trailer. I was searching for a trailer everywhere. Like I knew what I wanted. I wanted a horse trailer, could not find one. So 
if you have a strong why when you start your business, you need to continue to go back to that because my why was I needed a form of income. I lost my job. I was furloughed. I didn't know if I was going to get it back. I was planning events for a thousand people. I mean, they're still not even really doing events like that. And we're three years after the pandemic. So very long story short, I found the trailer. I renovated it. I opened this mobile bar business. I did go back to the Hyatt um, because I didn't know if this was just going to be like a side thing. Um, I didn't know if I was going to make money off of it. My goal was to have one event per month. Very quickly, we had 44 events in our first five months, which is just crazy, 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 I didn't crazy. know you blew up that quickly, that, that quickly. fast, and we're working another job. Yeah, yeah. I was working wow, at the Hyatt. Yep. Crazy. So I left the Hyatt in April. I had my first event in May um, because I knew that if I wanted, I saw what the potential of this was once I started telling people about it and telling people that and also, side note, I didn't tell anyone in the beginning because I didn't want any negative thoughts towards this. I was at such a vulnerable stage in my own life because I didn't have a job. I was, we had a family of four. We had a lot of bills to pay and I just didn't want any negativity to come in. So if you have this vision and you, you know, really know in your gut that this is what you need to do, you don't need to tell anybody. You know, obviously you need to tell people who are affected by it. I had to my husband because I'm like, listen, I'm leaving a 13 year career to uh, become a bartender. (laughs) So I was the same, honestly, when I was starting photography, like my business, Mm -hmm. actually starting photography, um, I was working full time at a retirement home. And that was kind of a I mean, sort of corporate too. That was my first real job, like actually on the books. Besides that, I had always been paid under the table at a couple different jobs. Um, and I was, I think I got that job when I was 19 and I left when I was 20. Okay. Um, I was there for a year. I was there for a full year. And um, it was kind of the same thing. Like I was doing the same thing every day. I love, 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 love the elderly. I love older people. Um, I grew up with my grandparents. We all lived together. So it was very like, touched my heart like I felt like I could belong there and I was working in their restaurant so they had talked about with the head chef there and companies closed now so it doesn't really matter but (laughs) still (laughs) still running different company but um they were talking about promoting me to be their restaurant manager and I always liked planning to I was a stage manager in high school did all the theater stuff did that professionally once I graduated before COVID and um yeah I just love the the, like administration part of it all the emails organizing people getting the director's vision and like making it happen so do you feel that that's now helping you in your business oh 100 percent me too 100 percent um and that might that might um be telling of the both of us like we both started about a year and a half ago yep right and we're as far along as we are um with the knowledge that we had prior and neither of us right you didn't go to school for like business or anything so I had no clue that I was ever going to be an entrepreneur like Mm -hmm. it was not in my five-year plan it wasn't in my 10-year plan not that I had one but it was not in my plan at all at all was it in yours yeah sort of I always wanted to run my own business like do my own thing I just didn't know what it would be in interesting Um, so I kind of went into the theater thing thinking like oh I really like stage management but like I just kind of follow my sister's footsteps and everything. And that's what she's doing right now. So, (laughs) but I, I don't know. I liked the thought of being my own boss, doing my own thing, not having a job with a schedule. I hated having a job with a schedule. See, I think this is where I can now agree with you because I always had a boss and I never got, I got along with one boss. She was amazing. She helped in my path of the corporate ladder and all the other ones, I just didn't, I butt head it. Like we butt heads mm. because I needed to be my own boss. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah. See, I'm a follower and like, I'm a people pleaser and I know that you are too, but like, yes. I'm a big time people pleaser where like, if somebody's like mad at me or something, like I will shrivel up and go back into my crab shell. Like Aww. that's the kind of person that I am. But yeah, you are. Um, I don't know when I'm, a, when I'm my own boss, like, you know, you can like take a second to pr- for yourself and be like, Megan nobody's mad at you Mm -hmm. and if somebody is mad at you that's their problem yep (laughs) absolutely absolutely yeah but um 
what were we talking about? <laughs> How do we get back on track to what See, we were saying? This, this is our, our spirals we're going to go on, which I think, yeah. I think that's what this podcast is really going to be about. It's just us sharing our stories and hoping that we can motivate someone else. That's what we're going to go into. We're going to go into the motivation side um, on really what kept us motivated in the beginning of starting this because as I mentioned before like entrepreneurship is such a lonely area because you don't have coworkers, you don't have someone to really do this with so it's your job to find those people and when I first started <clears throat> my business I listened to a lot of podcasts and that was something that really helped inspired me and there's one podcast that I always go back to like if I'm on someone's podcast they ask like you know do you have a podcast you recommend and it's called um empower her her name is Keisha and I think I sent this one to you and it's so not your type because she's like a very bubbly like come with me like very like crazy energy and that's what I feed off of like I need that and she does these little pep talks which I absolutely love so definitely listen to that podcast but she inspired me to start my business which sounds crazy but her podcasts were all about if you have this gut feeling and you have that like thing on your heart you need to run with it and like I said I never thought I was going to be an entrepreneur but when I first started I realized that I wanted something for myself and now that I'm in it the ways that I stay motivated is I remember why I started and again back to your why like Mm -hmm. my why my why is my kids like I want to start a business and have a legacy for them to maybe one day want to run maybe it won't be the bartending but you know maybe it's going to be some type of other other company but they're going to see that I did it and I was the one who I could start my own company so I have the faith to tell them that if I can do it you could do it and I think that that's where I put other people to like I'm nobody special and I say this all the time like yes I'm a go-getter I've always been a go-getter I always like if I have something that I want like my husband knows when I told him about this business I was like I think I want to open a mobile bar I think this is what I'm going to do and he knew that me just saying it it was going to happen and I think that's where the motivation for me comes in it's like if I manifest it and put it out into the universe like I have to make it happen yep yep how do you feel like what motivated you when you first started well, I would say that my why is just providing. Like like I said, I'm a people pleaser. Like I just want to do something for someone else. That's kind of what pushes me all the time. And same with theater. That's what pushed me to do all of that. I was in the back of my mind always like, oh, there's somebody relying on me. Somebody's waiting for me to get this report out. Somebody's wanting me to do this and this and this. And that was all the motivation that I needed to really get something done was that people are counting on me. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what weddings are for me I mean I love what I do like I love creating art for myself but really quick question because when you first started you weren't specific to weddings that wasn't where you wanted to go and then so Megan and I did a photo shoot together we did a holiday photo shoot and the following year I was like Meg are you ready to do the photo shoot again she goes I'm really excited to do it but I think I want to be more towards the wedding industry And it secretly broke my heart because I was like, oh gosh, no. We ended up finding other photographers that were amazing that do more like children portraits and things like that. But I just love that you knew the wedding industry was where you wanted to go and you wanted to focus your all on that because I think that's so important because you knew that you had a path and you knew that that's where it was going to go. What made you know that that was the route you wanted for photography when I first started and when we we did that photo shoot together that was my first that was both of our well that was my first year in like the wedding season and like big photography season because there's a slow season and a busy season Mm -hmm. and fall is like the busy season and so we did our Christmas card photo shoot and so I was doing a lot of Christmas cards that year some pets I'm still open to doing pet shoots I love dogs um but Yeah, I was trying to do it all, trying to do seniors, trying to do families, trying to do weddings, trying to do engagements, trying to do branding photos. Like I was taking anything that Mm -hmm. I could take. And I, I still think that that's, that was a smart move. And for anybody looking to get into photography, I think, um, taking what you can get and doing, trying it all is definitely the way to start. And then figuring out what you like after Mm -hmm. that and niching down, that's the way to go. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I tried it all and then I said, you know what? The family sessions are really fun, but I feel like, I feel like I am more fulfilled doing the engagement sessions and doing the weddings, like telling people's stories, Mm -hmm. their, their love life, um, the best day of their life. Like I, I feel much more fulfilled and passionate about that than I am the 
30 minutes, one hour family session with the kids just running around. But again, Mm -hmm. I'm not a mom. (laughs) I don't have kids. I don't have any younger siblings. I'm the youngest. I've got a dog, but she's very low energy. (laughs) So like, I don't know. Families just wasn't um, where I really felt the most lit up and on fire. Mm -hmm. Weddings are. I love that. I love that because I did the same thing when I first started. I took everything and anything and I feel like that leads you to very quick burnout. And I think absolutely you can very quickly burn out in this business because there's no end time. Like nine to five, you're quote unquote done at five if that's how your job plays out. Mine unfortunately didn't prior to this. So I kind of understood that entrepreneurship was going to be. It's funny. There's a quote. It's like, I quit my nine to five to work 24 seven. Yes. <laughs> and, but it's different when you're working 24 seven for yourself and it's your all, it's so different. But I feel like the ways to stay motivated are also not to get burnt out. So I took everything when I started to, I was taking events for 20 people and I didn't realize the logistics that went into setting up a horse trailer as a bar at someone's event and how much prep time and how much work and how much like me I want to say like labor because I'm literally lifting like hundreds of pounds of ice like there's the actual physical trailer like it takes a lot to hook your car up to it get it on the road get it on the road safely check all your lights bring it back to your house unhook everything Mm -hmm. like that in itself is several hours yeah yeah and I didn't realize that so I think that when you do start, you want to get your name out there. You want to get your brand out there. You you want to be in the face of everyone because that's how you're going to get more business is people seeing your business and seeing what you're doing live versus obviously social media is a great tool to have, but you, people want to see that interaction. They want to see that, you know, me pouring a drink and you smelling the mint that's coming off of the cocktail or something like that. So I did take everything, but I quickly learned in my second season that I can't do that if I want to be successful Mm. with this. So I upped my prices a little bit because I realized how much work this was and how much labor and time and commitment. And, and I put a minimum on a Saturday night because I realized that, you know, if, for example, if someone were to call me for a 20 person event, they're probably not going to reach that minimum, but the next day I could get a call for a hundred person event. And if I book that 20 person event, I only have one trailer. Same as you, you're only one person. Right. Yeah. And I just did something similar. I'm making second shooters mandatory now for at least half the day. They're included in my pricing now so that when people are booking with me, it's already included. It's not like a, oh, and a second shooter's mandatory and that'll be an extra, whatever. Like I have it included just because that's the way that I've, I felt like I've been the most successful is having a second person with me. And so it's kind of a, yeah, same thing. the same thing. I require a second bartender for any events over 50 because it's, it's smart. too much to do it's by smart. yourself. Um, but I feel like that came with time for both of us. Like our first year and anyone starting a business, you just wing it. Did you have a business plan when you first started? I did. Um, when I decided to start my business, because for me, it wasn't like a slow burn. It was like a decision. Mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to do this when I saw a lot of other photographers on Instagram because I was so passionate about photography. I was following a lot of photographers just because, and in COVID, you know, I'd be on my lunch break at work and scrolling through my phone and being like, Oh wow, that's a beautiful photo. And be like, I love how she edited that. Or like, Oh, I love that pose. That's so cool. And before that I had never thought about taking pictures of people. I had just taken pictures of landscapes and on vacation and mm-hmm. bugs outside and nature and stuff in my backyard. And um, once I sat down and was really looking at different photographers' pages, I was like, wow, I want to take pictures of people. I want to take pictures of couples. I want to do portraits. This is really cool. And then I realized all of those people that I was following, they were all women, young women around our age. And I was like, I thought that was a male dominated field. But hey, look at them. And wait, that you was thought that. photography was more male? It used to be. Really? Mm-hmm, yeah, it used to be. Interesting, because I I always thought it was more... I had a woman photographer for my wedding. I feel like I've always seen women. Interesting. I think today that's true. Okay. But it is like a male-dominated Interesting. field. Interesting. Okay. But I mean, what isn't? So, right. um, Not... Now we are dominating the field. <laughs> Women power. We are. But I did have a business plan because I, I sat okay. down and saw all of those people doing exactly like my dream. And I was like, I didn't know that was my dream, but it is. And I sat down and was like, how can I make that possible? Let me backtrack that into three years. 
and let me backtrack that into one year. And I was full time at my corporate job and was like, in one year, where do I want to be and how do I make that change start today? Because you got to stop talking about it and just start doing the yes, thing. Yes, you do. And so for me, I thought, okay, well, I'll go full time at my job another year and once I hit another year, then I'll go part-time and I'll do part-time on both. So I'll do this first year as a side hustle in photography and then I'll do part-time with both. And then the year after that, I'll go full-time in my business. And instead I ended up quitting my job <laughs> like two months later oh, yes. and then was just like, I'm just going to take a leap of faith and just try because. But did you have a gut feeling that y- if you put your all into it, that it was going to be successful? Yeah. Yeah. I have. I mean, I'm a good multitasker, but I kind of have a one track mind at the same time with like, I'm very motivated and go getter. And when I set my mind to something, I really want to do that thing. And I'm really motivated to do it. Like, even if I give up later or not, because I've had a lot of things where I'm like, oh, I want to try this. And then I've given up. But um, once I set my mind to something, I'm like obsessed with it. Like Mm -hmm. I have an obsessive personality once I get attached to something And so that's kind of how it was with photography. And I was like, I just have to keep nourishing it so that I don't give up and I don't get tired of it and I don't get burnt out. So I don't, I don't work past five and like I've set boundaries and things that will keep it fresh and lively for me. Um, And it's really worked because every day I'll wake up and be like, I'm excited to work today. And that's, I love that. Yeah. But that's how I got um, really started and really able to quit my job when I when I was but also keep in mind that I have zero bills I live with my parents I don't have rent I don't even have a phone bill so I'm very very lucky to still be on their insurance and all of that I I know that I'm in a very privileged spot to be saying all of those things Um, but who would I be to not take advantage and make the most of that and take that leap of faith when I have the opportunity to you know and so I'd been dying to move out, still am. Love you, Shan, but (laughs) I love my parents, but like I've been dying to move out and saving up and looking at apartments and we just don't have anything affordable where we live. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put that on hold Mm -hmm. and do what I want in my business. And then maybe I'll make enough with that to be able to achieve my dreams. And I feel like I've it was only like a year ago, but I feel like I've grown up a lot since then. <laughs> and oh, my plans for that have changed. This make you grow up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And you had mentioned that you were watching people on social media. And I think that that is so important for people to understand starting their business is everyone's watching. People are always looking at you. They're always watching what you're doing and how you got there. And I think one thing for me is I love that I can be an inspiration to other people. And I love that I can take what I did and what I created and show other people that if I can do it, so can you. And I had mentioned I'm nobody special, but I worked really, really hard to get where I am today and to make sure that this business was successful and I did not have a business plan and it was funny because I thought I was gonna have to take a loan out and to get a loan you have to have a plan because I don't think any bank would ever give you any money see I don't know all of this stuff because I just kind of started like I, so, I it was a hobby so like I had everything that I kind of needed and just grew from there so that's interesting I yes, didn't know that so I but I didn't end up taking a loan we were very lucky that through the pandemic we weren't doing anything so we literally put all of our money into this business um and the nice thing too is the mobile bartending business is there's not a lot of overhead so we had to pay for the trailer we had to pay for our marketing expenses things like that but I was able to use our savings and things like that so I didn't need a business loan but I did not put a business plan on paper. I had like everything in my head, which is so bad. I don't recommend that to anybody. Um, But I feel like I just like took it day by day. But I did have one goal in mind. Um, my, My first goal was to do one event per month. We had mentioned that. Very quickly, I realized that that was not, I was doing way more than one event per month. Um, and I did leave my corporate job to do this full time because I saw the potential on what this business could be. And I knew that if I wanted it to be as successful as what I envisioned, I needed to put my all into it. So 
my plan kind of changed and my second plan was to reach six figures within my first year of business. And I did that, which ah! is crazy. That's really great. Um, and I, I don't say that to brag, but I say that to let everyone know that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And yes, I was working crazy hours and I was taking every single event possible, but it helped me grow my business and it helped me show that if you work hard, you can literally do anything that you set your mind to. So I think that I love that we both had different plans when we started. You wrote down goals, you wrote down things. And I did write down goals. I did like a vision board, like I'm a very big vision person. And I looked back at my vision board and it was, I think it was to do, I don't know the exact numbers. I'll have to talk about this next episode, but I had a certain amount of events that I wanted to do and I totally bypassed that. But I I had a number written down that I wanted to do. Um, so I feel like I, I did have goals in a weird way, which I think is very important to have. Don't you agree with that? Yeah. No. And I, I was the same. I sat down and I was like, how many events do I want to do this year? Mm -hmm. And how many do I want to do per month? Because thinking about money, if we're talking financials, like where you want to be in five years, you have to think about how much money is that going to cost and how long is it going to take you to make that money? So you have to think about what is my pricing going to be per event to make that happen. And so my goal was one wedding per month and this October, this October, how many do you have? Fall is the busy season. I have two each weekend. I have a Saturday, Sunday That's wedding. Amazing. Every week, it's going to be very tiring, but I'm really looking forward to it. They're all incredible couples, and amazing. that's why I'm passionate about it. Like I love all the people that I'm going to be shooting for, and I'm really motivated and excited for every single one of them. But oh, looking that. at it, it's a little daunting to be like I have double header weekends every weekend. I. I'm also going to have a crazy season this year. So I didn't take everything, but now we have a second trailer that we are now doing multiple events per weekend. And I'll go into a whole nother episode about how I, I plan to run, run that side. But I think one important thing is if your business isn't growing, you're not growing with it. So I think it's important to add more to your plate because I if you can handle it, if you can handle more to your plate. And and I think it takes the learning. And I, I think it goes back to our background and our history and what we learned through our lives of me in the corporate industry. And I was in sales. And I think that that really helped me be able to sell a business. Mm. And I think, like I said, I would never have changed any thing that I did to get here now because I feel like I've learned a lesson from everything. Next episode, we are going to talk about networking. And I think it's so important to, not even when you're just starting a business, we're now in it for, let's say, two seasons. And it's still so important to network. So I think that is going to be a whole really fun episode on how to network your business, how to get your name out there, and how to really share you know, why you're so passionate and why other people should hire you to be you know, at their yeah. events and weddings and things like that. Yeah. And we both do a lot of weddings and we do. I mean, each wedding you're meeting brand new people, mm -hmm. new wedding planner, new day of coordinator, new venue, new videographer, new DJ. Like you meet new vendors every single wedding you do and you rarely repeat. Like I rarely do weddings with the same people mm -hmm. again. Um, each day is brand new and each person is, you know, a brand new clean slate yeah. um and you need I say to that all the time I say mm -hmm. at every one of my events say there's 100 people that's 100 opportunities to possibly get another event out of yeah yeah or meeting a new vendor that's yep. another person that might refer you to somebody else so if this um if you're working with a caterer and the caterer is like wow Jen you did a really great job I love how you made your menus your drink menus so personalized for your clients and I love how you did this and that like they are more likely to refer you to their next client that way and same with a photographer like we work so closely with the day of coordinator so closely with the videographer like they are more likely to refer you to their upcoming clients whether it be that next year or like whatever um I if actually you, make it yeah. a point at all of my events to go introduce myself to the vendors because I, think, I think that's so important because you're leaving an impression to them and they do events all the time. Like your bride and groom are amazing and they're going to refer you too, but they're not at events all the time. So it's so important to, and we're going to dive into this next episode, but it's so important to use your network and other vendors are your network. Whether you mm -hmm. think they are or not, they definitely are. And we're a network to them because if we like a caterer or if I like a photographer, I'm going to recommend them to my potential clients too. Yep. 
Yep. And we actually just had a client reach out to both of us. Yeah. Which is really cool. So this will be our first one that we're actually paid to work together for. Yeah. We've never worked an event together. Never. I mean, besides the one that we've created. Yes. Like the photo so, shoot. But. Going back to the photo shoot too, by the way, if nobody understands what that was, we probably should have preference that. But we've done content days. And I think we can talk about that networking next episode. But content days are so important. I'll leave it for the next episode. But we definitely have to talk about that. Yeah. So the one that we met at um, was not one that we created. I mean, that was the first time I had ever used i have a canon r6 that was mm -hmm. the first time i ever used that camera that was the first time i ever took pictures of people and that was the first time that we met and I, the reason why i went to that content day was um because i wanted to get into weddings but who's gonna hire me to be a wedding photographer or even have me as a, as a second shooter if i have no portfolio mm -hmm. and so that was my way to get in there was even though they're models and even though it's like a mock wedding mm -hmm. um i could showcase those pictures and be like i hey i haven't done a wedding yet but i would love to second shoot for you and here is a content day that i went to recently and these are this is what i can do um so that was what that was all about there yeah. were three there was one model couple and then two uh solo bride models Brides, yep. and the vintage horse <laughs> i was there and that was the same thing for me i really had no pictures of a event before let alone a wedding because i had just started i didn't have any any photos in my gallery and that's the same with me like who's gonna hire a bartender when I'm like I make really pretty drinks but you don't know what they look like because I don't have any photos of you them yet you can see them on my iPhone photos yeah so it's like a yeah. totally different thing because it, it makes you look a lot more professional yep. like like you've been around a lot longer if yep. you have and I also knew pictures. this was when Megan and I were gonna, gonna connect because I loved all the photographers that were there but you actually captured the best pictures of me and I use them to this day all the time even though she's changed her editing since then um but I still love all those pictures and that just like I feel like was the again the the turning point where I feel comfortable referring you because I personally, I'm a big component as if I like something, I want to refer to other people. Um, and I think that's important because mm -hmm. not everyone has the same style, things like that. But I feel like if I feel confident, then I'm more confident to refer you. Yeah. And I love your pictures. So. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I also want to shout out um, Amanda O'Neill Imagery. Yes. She was the host of the content day and she planned everything out. She got all the brides, all the dresses. She got you. So we yep. got connected through her. So yep. God bless. Um, yes. She's out in California now, but she comes back to Connecticut a lot. She for does. Shoots, so, um, but yeah. And since then, I mean, we'll talk more about networking in the next episode, but since then we planned a content day together with, I mean, lots of other Mm -hmm. lovely ladies but yep. um we did that together and we're working on another one with two other photographers that are really heading it and um probably more in the future so yeah oh, definitely but you're yeah. stuck with me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just crazy that we have gotten so tight and mm -hmm. know each other so well and we've worked together so many times and yet we haven't done a real wedding or event together. No. So it's just really funny to me, but it is. And that's our, that's our end goal. But, but I think we've gained so much more out of doing an event together. I think like we have just, and we've used both of our brains and creative minds in different ways to be able to showcase our businesses together, which is just amazing. And also with all of the events and things that we've done together, like we've created those. That's another thing that I wanted to talk about today was, um, not waiting for opportunities to come to you, but to kind of make your own opportunities. And it's the same thing with what I said. I didn't have a portfolio. And so I said, how do I change that? Let me attend a content day, get pictures of models and make clients, potential clients want to book with me. You can't just wait for people to come to you. You kind of have to sell yourself. I yep. mean, you said that you're a sale, you were a salesman mm -hmm. and like, that's how you, um, that's how you grow is you have to keep talking about what you're doing. Keep talking about it on social media, start a podcast, like yes. talk about it and talk about it and talk about it until your head falls off and just, and I'm, I'm not a huge manifestation person, but I have learned that it's so important to like tell the universe what you want to happen and it will happen. But I think that's where it motivates you. And back to like our whole motivation, I think if you put a plan out there, you have a goal, you continue to talk about your goal or continue to write it down I have a post-it in my bathroom that says today is going to be a good day and then another one is you got this and my husband probably thinks I'm crazy because I look at it every day but that's my motivation so yeah. find like one little hack that's going to help you really see something every single day whether it's on your computer whether it's on your phone you know some people put like the lock screen of their phone mm -hmm. as like a motivational quote whatever it is that works for you do that 
for me, what I do is I set a to-do list. Love that. Every day. Like I have a planner that has the days in the calendar and I just set like a list of what I'm going to do tomorrow. Like the night before or like at the end of my work day, I'll sit down and be like, here are the top three things I'm doing tomorrow. And here are five long-term goals I'm going to do. Like I need to update my insurance information. I've bought some more gear and I really need to tell my insurance people about it. And that's like one of those long-term goals where it's like, "Eh, I don't have to do that tomorrow, but like I really should get to that soon. And so I think having like a list like written down, I'm a very visual person. I like having things written down for me to see and remind you and set reminders for yourself. And it just... I See, this is what, where we differ. I don't even have a to-do list. I have a planner, but I don't even use it. I use HoneyBook. Godsend. Love HoneyBook. Um, we could talk about that in another episode too, but I love that that's where we're different. Like I, I just wing it, which is so bad. And it's, I don't recommend that to anyone, but it's what works for me. Like I, I do write things down. I, I do have like, I know when my clients are happening. I know when my events are happening, but the to-do list like I need to do my taxes right now mm-hmm. and I'm just like putting it off and putting <laughs> it off and I'm like oh my gosh the deadline is coming up so yeah uh, but I love that you that you do that maybe maybe you couldn't motivate me to do that okay maybe we'll make an episode <laughs> about it yes I love that how to stay organized and love that keep a clean environment which is so important like I say I don't have a to-do list but I am organized in certain ways and I think that that's so important like you have to be organized in this industry because no one's holding you accountable you're holding yourself yeah. accountable and I mean all the times that we've worked together you've never dropped the ball on anything <laughs> I may have but you just didn't see it I mean you were 10 minutes late today but <laughs> <laughs> but I no do have to deal. say we got a reel out of it so yeah it it ended up being fine, but but seriously though, like all that's going on in your mind, and you've n- never missed a beat. Yeah. So like some people, that's just how they thrive. Yep. Like you need that controlled chaos, chaos yes. in your mind, just yes. like going on. And other people like me, like if I have too much going on in my mind, something will slip through the cr- mm-hmm. through the cracks, like for sure. And so I have to have things written down for me to go back to. Like I have stuff written down on my hand like all the time where if I'm just like in the moment, I'm like, oh my God, tomorrow I forgot I need to go do this. I have to go take the trash. The I have only to go thing do this. I ever ri- wrote on my hand was like to cheat on a test. Jen. <laughs> Hopefully none of my professors are listening this day, but um, I love that. I just, I love that you can run a business in different ways. And I think that that's so important for any listener who is questioning, like, can I do this? You can, you can do it your own way. You can stumble, you can fail. It's how you learn from your mistakes. Yep. 100%. I love that. (laughs) Well, thank you everyone for staying tuned this long. I'm excited to conclude our first episode. This has been a a long time in the works, um, but I'm glad that we're finally doing it. So we plan to do bi-weekly episodes in the beginning. Um, as we get into busy season, we continue. We'll probably do bi-weekly again, but we're excited to share this with you. Um, thank you so much for listening for this long. And uh, we can't wait to hopefully motivate someone to start your business, um, listen to our journey, and hopefully we can inspire you to go do that thing that you've always dreamed of. Yeah, absolutely. And it will be shareable on all platforms. Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube. Um, we're going to be on TikTok and Instagram. I don't think we have a Facebook. Maybe we'll start. We do. Facebook. We, we do, do have Facebook. We do. Yeah. Right. See, this is day one. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, everything will be shareable if you. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you resonated with anything that we talked about today. You can share it with a friend. Yes, please share because we want to get this out to other, not even just women, but I think that's primarily who we're talking to at this point, but we really want to get it out to other people and we want to continue to inspire people to start their journey because it really helped us in so many ways and we just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. We're here. We would appreciate your feedback too because- I mean, it's it's different being on this side versus being a listener and a viewer. So if there's something that you're like, oh, wow, that was really interesting. I didn't know that. I want to hear more about this. Like, let us know. Send yes. us a review, DM us or something, and yep. we'll we'll make an episode about it if there's um, anybody asking for something specific. So, yes. yeah. And we will have guest speakers eventually, too. I think the first few we're going to keep to ourselves, but we definitely want to have guests um, – who are in the wedding field and in the wedding market and help share their stories too. So we're excited to. And regular business too. I mean, talking about taxes, we just touched on taxes a little bit. Um, 
we will definitely have financial advisors. Yes, we all need that. Other, yeah, we will definitely have other kinds of businesses as well. Weddings is our main focus, so that's what we're going to be talking about most of the time. But, I mean, a lot of what we're saying can resonate with anybody, with restaurateurs, with, um, I don't know, candle companies, like yeah. literally anything. Absolutely. Um, is Anyone running a business, yeah. we're here to give advice for. Yes. Because we're not perfect at all. Yeah. But it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. So thank you for tuning in. We are so excited. And please follow along on our journey. All right. See you later, guys. Bye.